Hello and welcome back to Practical Knife Reviews. Today we've got a little bit of a uh, curious blade for you, something that a lot of people won't have seen before. What we have here is a Klein Tools Hawkbill knife. And as you can tell, this is a vintage one. So uh, these Hawkbill knives are sometimes called pruning knives or sometimes called grafting knives. And that's because generally these were used for pruning shrubs, hedges, bushes, or grafting trees together. Although there are a lot of other knives that you can use these for. You can use them for cutting carpet or whatever. I mean, they really do have a lot of functions because when you're cutting, what you're cutting is getting caught on the inside of this uh, recurve here. And so you're getting a lot of cutting power behind what you're cutting. As we can see here on the tang stamp, Klein Tools, Chicago, USA. So I don't know when this specific knife was made. I looked on uh, on the internet for a fair amount of time to see if I could figure out based on the Tang stamp how old this particular knife was. And uh, just to note, this was a gift from our grandfather. But uh, I wasn't able to really find any information on when this particular knife would have been made. They actually still make a Hawkbill knife that is basically the exact same thing. Um, it's called the 1550-4 Hawkbill Slitting Blade. And you can get it on Amazon for about $23. And just like this, it also is a carbon steel blade. So when I got this knife, it was in really rough condition. I mean, the entire blade was basically orange with rust and it was almost impossible to open and close. It was pretty dull. Uh, in other words, my grandpa used it a lot, but didn't take a whole lot of care of it. Um, but I cleaned it up, soaked it in vinegar to get rid of the rust, wiped that down. Um, but as you can see, there's still a lot of pitting that was left behind on the blade here. There's also a little chip towards the tip of the blade that uh, I haven't really felt like filing out because most of my cutting is down in this area anyway. Uh, and there's a few other flaws on here, but Laura, before we talk about that, what, what do you think about this knife? I think this knife is fun. I call it the prune. Um, I like the shape of it because it reminds me of, how do you say, a scythe? Yeah. So I just think it's a fun shape. It kind of reminds me of like murder mystery shows where you see scythes being used for that. But Which, of course, are your favorite kind of show. Oh, yeah. So is this a like is this a type of knife that the, the design just appeals to you? I mean the shape of the blade. Yeah, I think it, it's just interesting. So so uh, for a little bit of background info, about what two weeks ago, I asked Lara what her favorite uh, traditional knife pattern was. So I showed her some trappers, some stockmen, uh, some camp knives, barlows, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And of all of the patterns that I showed her, her favorite was the hawkbill knife. And the prune. <laughs> the prune. And that does come down a lot to the shape of the blade. Uh, yeah, she just, she just liked it a lot. So now let's look at this knife a little bit more. The handle from a distance looks like wood, but if you look up close, it's just a hard plastic. And you can hear, just the hard plastic. What we have here, we have a brass liner lock and a carbon steel blade. Don't know exactly what kind of carbon steel, but I would venture to guess that it's probably a 1095, maybe a 1084. Uh, hard to tell, especially because I don't know when this specific knife was made. We've got brass pins. We've got probably a nickel silver bolster. Again, not sure. Uh, that brass liner goes all the way through. We've got a steel back spring. Again, carbon steel. We can see all of the pitting there. We've got probably a stainless steel bale. So this is for putting a, a lanyard through to hook onto your pants or in your pocket so you have easy access to it. And it looks like there's one stainless steel pin through there that's holding the back spring and the, uh, the liner in place right here. So on this specific knife, it's a lot easier to open than it is to close. It's really stiff in the back spring. Fortunately, it has a half stop. Otherwise it would be, in my opinion, pretty dangerous to be having to push that hard to get it to close. 
but the half stop is a fairly solid half stop and then it drops down. Not great walk and talk. Uh, I'm going to attribute that to age and wear. Now we can see on the back we have a little bit of gapping between the brass liner and the uh, carbon steel back spring. But you know, for a cheap tool, I mean, even the new ones now, you can get them for 23 bucks, like I said, uh, it's not that bad. The handle's actually held up fairly well. Uh, it's just a cheap plastic. You wouldn't really expect it to, to uh, break down uh, over time significantly, but it's held up pretty well nonetheless. Uh, and it opens nice, but one of the big problems I've got with this is that, so the reason that this blade sits so far out is because it has a really big kick. And what I mean by that is, here's your kick. Now, the kick is there for you to put your finger underneath if you wanna choke up on the blade. Okay, that seems fine. The issue is, is that where this kick is, the uh, brass, liner comes right into your finger. So if you're actually choking up, it's not the most comfortable because of this, which is inherent to this type of brass liner lock. The issue is, is that they've put such a strong kick on there. And again, a lot of the times people, when they use these knives, will actually hold them this way. And your thumb also is going to be running right into that brass uh, liner rather than having a nice groove to sit in. So the problem with having a kick that's this uh, protrusive is that when you close it, let's do this without cutting myself, this protrusive is that it only goes this far before the kick runs into that back spring and prevents it from closing any farther. And you can see how far the blade out, or blade is out of the handle. You can actually see the cutting edge right there. You can see some daylight between, and you can see that the tip just makes it to the edge, just barely inside the handle. Now I could file down that kick so that it would drop farther in, farther in there. And if I was going to be using this a lot, I probably would, but since it's a memento from my grandfather, I'm not gonna be uh, filing off parts of the knife. The other issue is that, well, you can see there's a gap between the blade and that brass liner. So it rocks forward and back pretty far. Now, of course, the lock is still gonna work. It's not gonna close on your hand, but I don't know. I just don't like that much forward and back wobble on a locking knife. So uh, yeah, now let's do some measurements and some tests. So what do you think, Laura, measurements or tests first? Let's do some measurements first. All right, so let's get our scale out here. We're looking at 111 grams, which is 3.9 ounces. Let's get the same frame. So here we're looking at opened. It's exactly seven inches. Cutting length of about two and three quarters inches overall blade length, just a shade over three. And if we look at it closed, it is, and again, got to be careful when closing this one because of how strong that back spring is. Uh, looking at it closed, it's about four. just a shade under four, I would say. Maybe three and seven eighths or so. Uh, yeah, so there's our size. Now let's do some quick uh, testing. So we'll open that up. Where's my paper? Right. Ah, there it is. So we're gonna first look at just our standard lined paper. And as I said, when I got this, whoops, when I got this, it was pretty darn dull. Eh, right there, there might be a dull spot. So we're getting a dull, either a dull spot or just I'm struggling to cut on camera. I think it's the camera because every time that I look away from the camera, it cuts okay. And every time I uh, look at the camera, it doesn't cut, cut very well. So it cuts all right. It's not the sharpest in the world. I definitely have sharper knives than this. It's hard to cut, uh, to sharpen these recurves, but yep, 
as I said, I'm not really using this one a whole lot just because it's an heirloom piece, so haven't bothered to get an absolute razor's edge on it. Now let's look quickly at how it works on the cardboard as I make a mess. So here we go. And not the easiest on that cut, much easier on that one. Much easier on that one. A little bit of resistance, but uh, I think that it's just catching that resistance in that unsharpened area. So if you were uh, going to be more diligent at sharpening, I think that this would be pretty good at cutting cardboard, but this is that's definitely not the uh, intended usage for it. So next we're gonna go take it outside and do some light usage of it out there. So we're back looking at the Klein Tools Hawk Bill knife, also known as a pruning knife or a grafting knife. And again, keeping in mind that this is a liner lock, uh, but no real need to mention that. We've already talked about it. The only other thing to remember is that this is a more vintage knife, well, well used. And uh, yeah, so none of this is going to be like what you would get if you got a new one. They make this exact same style still that you can buy on Amazon, but I have no idea how the modern ones are going to compare to one that's been beaten and abused for years and years. So we're gonna take a quick look at how it performs on feather sticking. Even though you typically wouldn't use a hawkbill knife for feather sticking, we're just gonna take a look at it anyway, just for the sake of it. So we've got our usual pine as our soft wood and red oak as our hard wood. And we're just going to see how this wood does in case you happen to bring this knife out into the woods and you wanted to start a little fire. So let's see how we're doing. And... It's not as bad as I was thinking. No, I mean, it definitely works. Um, the only thing that's a little tricky is you're always wanting to get caught up right on the inside of that recurve. So you're having to consciously drop it down uh, rather than pull up. But with this, this knife, I mean, and we've got it pretty sharp right now. I mean, that was pretty easy to get those feather sticks. They're not the best feather sticks in the world, but they're pretty easy to get them. Let's try another face just for the sake of it. What I'm noticing is you're able to get a thicker, like wider feather stick yeah. rather than usually the skinny. And that's partially due to just how flat this edge is here until you get to the recurve. And also just partially because this pine is really soft. So we're able to really dig into it. But we can see with this really thin, uh, this really thin blade stock, it really, really gets into that wood easily. Now let's see if that's consistent with our red oak, which is a hard wood. Let's just see if we can break that out of the way. So we can see here, we're actually getting quite nice feather sticks considering that red oak is a really hard wood. And we're looking at a hawk film knife, which would be used for grafting or pruning typically. I mean, those are acceptable feathers, uh, not the best in the world, but as far as a hawk bill pruning knife goes, that's actually pretty good. You know, we'll just look at a different face just for the sake of it. Yeah, these ones aren't curling over as much, which just means that we're getting thicker feathers and that means that if they're not going to catch on fire as easily but again with a hawkbill knife that's not bad I mean those are perfectly fine feather sticks and the other thing to note is that I was not using much effort when making this in red oak that's a hard wood so this is a surprisingly good feather sticker even though you wouldn't typically be thinking of a hawkbill knife for feathers that works quite well now we're gonna go take it out and use it for just clipping off a few branches to show you what you would typically be using this for. So now we're gonna look at how this works on some green wood just for, uh, you know, pulling through it. So this is something that you would think that a hawkbill knife would be used for more. So we've got this branch right here. We're just gonna pull right through it and we're gonna see how we do. So we see we're getting pretty good penetration Now this is a pretty hard wood, but with it being green, it's not exactly seasoned or anything. So let's pull this way. And the inside of that curve is really nice for 
pulling through. I mean, the, the point of this is, is that as you pull through, you get the entire length of the blade into it. There's no point at which, uh, you know, your tip rolls away from it. I kind of want this to go I this way. I am five foot three and he is quite a bit taller than me. So I don't have the best angles on this particular task. Which is okay. I mean, this isn't, this should be going a lot better than it is. That's mostly due to the user, not due to the tool. I am, I picked the branch that was a little bit higher than I should have. But now we're just going to see how this does with uh, more mm, small little bits. So we're going to just take off these little bits right here and right here. And there's not a whole lot of effort that's going into these. I know it seems like I'm going through a lot more, uh, a lot harder than I am. We're just going to cut into this right now. And you can see how when you pull through, instead of like a usual knife where it falls off the edge, we're falling right into that recurve. Now you can see that this is working a lot better when I actually have an angle that I know how to use on it. I'm getting eaten alive out here. Yeah, there's some few bugs, but that's okay. So yeah, we can see that as we pull through, we're getting that entire hawk bill in there. And yeah, I mean, it works well for its intended purpose. This would also work well for pulling through carpet or any sort of fabric where you're going to be wanting to make really long cuts where you want the tip to stay in it the whole time. So, hawkbill knife, it's a very useful tool overall, and uh, I quite like them. Uh, not something that I would typically EDC, but something that if I was planning on doing some work with carpeting or I was going to be in the garden all day, this is a knife that I would definitely think about bringing out. So, Laura, what do you think overall about the Klein Tools Hawkbill knife? I wouldn't carry it. It's still my favorite, but I'm getting eaten alive, so that's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so I guess that that's all we're going to say. Keep in mind, you can look on Amazon. I will put a link in the description for this knife. It's about $23 right now on Amazon for the modern version of this. Uh, carbon steel blade still on their listing, but again, I can't speak to the quality of the new ones. I can only speak to this vintage one, which I quite like. So that's our final thought on this. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.